uncommonly lively today. No more than usual, madam. But you, you are far too miserable. Your face grows longer from day to day. <laughs> you only think that because I take no pleasure in discussing politics with my aunt or in gossiping idly with you. Come now, madam, you can be more open with me. You've got some secret preoccupation. Why, we've all noticed it. We were discussing it only this morning with Mr. Jones. <sighs> with Mr. Jones? And who, pray, gave you permission to bring me into the conversation? Well, and what of it? As if it were a crime to hear your praises sung by the prettiest young gentleman imaginable. And when it comes to rendering service to a lady, well, he's always first into the breach. <laughs> That's what I like in a man. <laughs> really? I'm ready to believe you're in love with him yourself. Something convinces me there's more to that man than meets the eye. How your father loves him. And Mr. Allworthy, he's been like a father to him ever since he found him abandoned as a newborn baby. Indeed, you can be sure I'll gladly take his side myself when I hear things said against him. That's most good-hearted of you. Yes, and another thing. That fratchety old Quaker in Mr. Allworthy's household, Mr. Dowling, he barely has a good word for anyone, so aloof. But when he talks about Jones, he talks with respect. Yes, I've noticed that too. Oh, madam, as the heavens are just, all will be brought to light. Meanwhile, he needs someone to look after him, poor boy. And you are just the person he needs. <laughs> what are you trying to say? Well, yesterday, he was taking a walk in the garden after dinner. There was I, behind a bush, when I heard him say only a thousand times more tenderly than I ever could. Mrs. Honour, if you promise to make no further mention of this, I'll forgive you. But be careful. You're indiscreet. Far too indiscreet. If 
My father ever saw for your matter. I... Someone's coming. It's your aunt engrossed in her gazette as usual. Against all reason, the Scots are revolting again. It's too much. I'd had a treaty drawn up, clauses worked out, but they would have none of it. Really, how tiresome it is to make arrangements for people who will not <laughs> listen. Oh, but, Aunt, would it not be simpler to let people make arrangements for themselves? Oh, that is most easily said. <laughs> but these perpetual contradictions tease me so much that I have little time to consider the interests of this household since that brainless father of yours leaves all the bother of looking after it to me. There's not a scrap of perception in that hot and tot head of his. Only horses and dogs. If only he could see through you as I do. <laughs> see through me? Yes, you, Miss Weston. Oh. How guileless you are, my dear, how charmingly. <laughs> Ingenue. But for the last two months, ever since our, our neighbour, Mr. Allworthy, his ward Smith, and the Jones, and his nephew Blifer came home, you have been morose, distracted, brooding, and I know why. But I swear to you that there's no... You are in love, Sophia. How could you think such a thing? <laughs> To try to deceive me, so pray do not tell me a lie, my dear. choice. He is most suitable. I shall broach the matter with your father at once. Oh, aunt, can anyone be as good to me as you are? That's what I like to hear. You may rely on me. <laughs> there is your father. There's no mistaking that noise. Get down! Lead down! Me. What a hunt that was! Uh, what a hunt, agent! What a hunt, sir! Yes, my fine friend, and all thanks to you. Ah, good 
Hey, Sophie, how are you, my dear? Pay your respects to young Tommy. Damn me if he ain't the finest huntsman in the whole of Somerset. Oh, no, sir. That honour belongs to you. Uh, flattering young hound. Nay, mm. <laughs> lad, I speak the truth. Gad, Sophie, you should have seen him strap me. What? Energy. But, of course, you, uh, you women get up so damnably late. Perhaps, brother, we should all roam the woods before dawn. I am only sorry that we cannot. Indeed, ma'am, the sight of your pleasure would have greatly increased our own. Oh, to be sure, it is most flattering for ladies of quality to expose themselves daily to the fury of the elements. Uh, my dear sister, did you uh, concern yourself with playing at politics? <laughs> And don't meddle with our pleasures. Oh, damn me, though. You should have seen the hunt this morning. A perfect day, a ten-point stag, the pack in full cry. I blow my horn to call the pack together. We set off. Ready to make the pace with my friend Jones. Ready to make the pace with my friend Jones. I hear them cry, a bay, 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 a bay. When at once I say, let the hounds be away, let the hounds be away. Tally ho, tally ho, tally ho, tally ho, tally ho, tally ho, tally ho. The stag is hotly chased by my hounds. The stag is hotly chased by my hounds. The horn sounds, sounds, sounds. Run after him, run after him, my lads. Ta da, ta da, ta da. The horn sounds, sounds, sounds. Run after him. My lads, to la to la to la, to la to la to la, to la to la to la. One dog's excitement proves a distraction, proves a distraction. Leaving the trail, they change direction. Leaving the trail, they change direction. Charms. Charms with one bright balls and back at heel. <laughs> oh, Tam, Timmy, Tam, Timmy, Foe. Come, Prince, come, Patch, come, Rex, come, Rex. Oh, 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 Back and back and away, away. We chase him this way and that. We follow his trail. We're hot on his trail. Tally ho, tally ho. Run after him, after him, lads. He tires. He's ours. The thickets impede his escape. After him, Prince. After him, Patch. After him, Rex. After him, Roll. The noble stag begins to flag. Ta da, ta da, ta da, ta da. He rushes into the water. The stag's at bay. The stag's at bay. Tally ho, tally ho. Now he flashes and falls. Tally ho, tally ho. Now he flashes and falls. Now he falls. Now he falls. The horn sounds. The echo resounds. The horn sounds. The echo resounds. I send in the hounds. I send in the hounds. The beasts at bay. He's forced to stay. To stay. Staggers to his feet. Then at last he comes. <laughs> Thank you. 
drink a toast to victory. My friends, my friends, let's celebrate our glory. Longer, I could eat an ox. Dinner, but it's not yet midday. And what of it? Tell them to be quick about it before we die of hunger. Oh. Come, lads, let's drink about. One moment, brother. <laughs> Miss, kindly retire to your room. And you, gentlemen, would you oblige me by permitting me a moment alone with my brother? Your, your servant, man. Soon's his tyranny. I know not what he wants, but well, we, we must keep the women happy. The bitch can't live forever, and I know I am down with upon the will. Go on down to the candles, my friends. I'll, I'll join you presently. Well, sister, what is it now? Is the uh, governor of Jamaica piqued at your last letter? <laughs> or are you come unstuck with your history of Western thought? Western thought. No, more than gothic ignorance. What I wish to say to you, brother, is that you know nothing of what goes on in your own house. Gad, woman! I know that this house is littered with your papers. I know that French wines are damnably expensive this year. And I know that the country is going to the dogs. I settle up with the farmers every year. I pay my servants every month. And I have time to drink with my friends every day. What more is there to know? Do you know that your daughter will shortly be 18? Yes, I do. What does she want? Well, well, you have never thought of giving her hmm? what one desires at her age. A husband! A ah, husband? Well, of course, it is uh, tis my fondest wish to see her happy and marry her off to the richest heir in the county. Well, I have noticed that ever since Mr. Allworthy's nephew came back... Blifil? Yes, Blifil. Blifil? Ha! Do you seriously imagine that, that my Sophie could You may rely on my perception! A pox on your perception! Oh, yeah. I must confess, Blifil, well, he's a damnably bad huntsman, of course. Well, apart from that... Uh, he is a respectable enough fellow. And he is Allworthy's nephew. And sole heir. We'll be very rich. My, my daughter thinks well of him. She does. So, there we are then. That's settled. <laughs> Tally ho, sister. <laughs> While you inform Allworthy, I shall ask Sir Fire to come and hear the happy news. <laughs> Yes, indeed, indeed. This, uh, this marriage will be just the thing. For nothing could lie so handy together as our two estates. If I go hunting on their land, I shan't be trespassing. I shall stay with my son-in-law and enjoy my daughter's embraces into the bargain. Ah, what joy I see in store. I shall tell the news to i 
source of pleasure to me. Yeah, and yet you have never deigned to hunt the stag with me. Everyone to his own tastes, sir. Curse my jacket, I'm damned if I know what your tastes are. Peace, neighbour, peace and quiet. A stroll in the gardens, a shady corner to read in. Yes, yes, well, uh, um, let me tell you the, uh, the happy news. You know how much I love my daughter. Ah. And I shan't arrange her marriage unless you are in complete agreement. Aye, but why should I object to your daughter's happiness? Splendid! In that case, it's settled. I'm putting her to your nephew, Blifil. To Blifil? Oh, how is it possible? They are in love. My, uh, my sister has told me so, and I'm a-telling you. You must send for Blifil at once, and we'll have him married in the morning. And harky your worthy, I'll bet thee five pounds to a crown we have a boy tomorrow night. Oh, nice. <laughs> that is easily said, sir. But an affair such as marriage... It must be concluded at once. I shall give my daughter half my fortune as her diary. Do you likewise for your nephew, and, well, let's, let's have done with it. <laughs> The arrangement is a little blunt, sir. I would rather consider the matter for... Oh, it's blood. There is nothing more to uh, consider. My mind is made up. <coughs> oh, very well, very well. I shall send Blifil to wait upon your daughter. I only pray she will consent to see Oh, oh she'll consent, she'll consent. <laughs> Frosty old fart. <laughs> I pity Sophie if Blifil is the least bit like him. Fire, upon us here. Splendid, splendid. Allworthy has agreed to the match. And I'll now have the pleasure of telling her myself. One moment, brother. So fire is in my charge. <laughs> it is I who have taken pains to arrange this marriage. And it is therefore only proper that the announcement be made by me. No, sister, let me do. Just you listen to your aunt. She has some wonderful news for you. You'll be so happy. Bah. <laughs> My father seems strangely excited. And so he should be. Mr. Allworthy has consented to everything your father is delighted. And this very evening you shall be united. United? Mm. With whom? With the man you love. Why this trouble look?
his feelings. But I've already told you, my dear, your choice is most sensible. He's a fine young man, very fine. Must admit that he is likable. Wise, considerate, well-spoken. Courageous, humane, witty. Discreet, knowledgeable, courteous. Charming, handsome. Refined, dignified. In, In a, a word, word, born to please. Jones! Jones! How, Jones? Jones and not Blithill? You dare to encourage a man of low estate, an illegitimate rake, to bring shame and dishonor on the blood of the Westons, to make me pass for a woman of no discernment? Oh, I'll have him hounded from the house, from Squire Allworthy's, from the whole county of Somerset! <laughs> Oh! <laughs> 
rest here a moment. Oh, by all means, Mr. Darling. I would also, before going to Miss Sophia, remind you of your promise. I remember it well, and I regret having given it. Your behavior disturbs me. Yet you see how necessary it is. Necessary? To be perfidious. Perfidious? <laughs> no. All I require of you is silence. After all, if this little secret of ours were to be revealed one day sooner or one day later, what difference would it make to Tom Jones? He would enjoy his status immediately. Wait till my marriage with Miss Sophia is concluded. But Jones loves her, and you do not. So what of it? This marriage is most convenient. If I listened to you, I would appear less suitable to her father. I should lose my inheritance, and he would break off the match. Enough! I understand only too well. Your heart is false. Worldly goods are all you seek in this match. Well, Blifil, I gave you my word. Now do you, in turn, remember your obligations. I was the keeper of your late mother's letters, and I delivered them to your charge. Your uncle Allworthy has now sent me to London on his business. But mark ye this. If, when I return, your lips have not revealed the truth, I shall do so myself. That is all I have to say. Good day to you, sir. Good day to you, sir. I'm not afraid of you. Those letters are in my possession and might so easily be lost. As for that bastard under your protection with his sickening good looks and spurious charms. Blifford! Ah, oh, cousin! I trust I find you well. I am surprised to find you here, cousin. Yet here I am. <laughs> Did you have a good journey? Satisfactory, I thank you. <laughs> ah! If ever birth and good fortune were happily united in one mortal, that man is Blifil. Ah, what hope have I of realizing my dreams?
You, Mrs. Honor. Yes, it's me. But I can go away again if my presence disturbs you. I know lovers like to be alone. <laughs> you do not know me very well if you suspect me of being in love. Oh, I don't suspect it for a moment. I'm certain of it. And with whom do you think I would dare to be in love? How artful you are. You only think that because you think that Sophia does not return your feelings. If only you knew the truth as I do. If I dared believe you, does Sophia Not actually... Not so fast. I didn't say that my mistress was in love, but it's the most candid liking. Oh, enough, Mrs. Honor, enough. <laughs> I could kiss you. Well, why not? You attic, eh? Hot on 
Tom has sent you, jolly dog. Tally ho, Tom, la tally. Go to her, go to her. Sniff her out. Uh, sir, I can explain everything. Soon because you take me for a fool. No, I promise you I No just... excuses, no excuses. Why, strap me. A mortal must go for a canter now and again. Let me uh, confide in you. After dark, when everyone at home thinks me fast asleep, fast asleep, in the mud of bushes with the pretty filly, with the pretty filly, I do creep, slide. I take courage, I take courage, and grow bold. My charmant goat, sir, charmant goat, sir. Oh, I charm, oh, I coax, playing games with the fair, Presbyterian Hanoverian bitch, my sister. 
She delights in contradicting me, sending me mad from morn till night with her damned newspapers and her damned politics. I rabbit it. In my father's day, the women, they came in with the first dish and went out after the first glass. But no! Well, <laughs> spoils me humour. Is Sophia not consolation enough? She loves you most tenderly. Ah, yes. My little Sophie is the dearest, sweetest child, but she won't be a consoling me for much longer. She's to be married in the morning. <clears throat> married? You didn't know? No, I swear I had no idea. Well, I think Bliffil will make a splendid husband. Bliffil? Yes, my daughter is madly in love with him, you know. My sister has sniffed it out. And it seems to me, for the first time in her life, that that bitch has done something sensible. I would never have thought that she liked Blipper. Slip me windpipe, neither would I. I. I can't think how it all came about. But I'm delighted. I, I couldn't have thought of a better match. Perfect. Quite perfect, don't you think? Perfect. Ah, here she is now, Tom. Tom, my lad, I want you to be the first to congratulate her. What's this, my dear? Afraid to look up, are we? <laughs> it's love, you know. It takes people in some funny ways. Uh, here's our friend Tom. I, I've just been telling him the good news, and he's delighted. Ask him yourself. I trust Miss Weston knows how much interest I have in her happiness. I know, sir, what your thoughts are. But, Father... If you love me... If I love you, can you doubt it? What is it you want? Just, just say the word. Father, I can't... Mr. Blithill is here and asks if he may present his compliments. Certainly, certainly. Let him come at once. Come, Tom, lad. We, uh, we needn't stand here listening to lovers billing and cooing. Damn me, all this, uh, all this thinking makes a man dry. <clears throat> I wish you every happiness... Happiness? Oh, how cruel! I would never have suspected that Sophia felt any affection for me, even less that so violent a passion should rage within her breast. But let us have done with the matter and press forward with the marriage, and quickly. I am greatly in your debt, my beautiful Sophia, and it is to the mutual accord of your father and my uncle that I owe the good fortune that awaits me. I know, so what my father's intentions are, but the matter is not yet concluded. Come! Modesty must not be allowed to suppress your adoration. Age, birth, fortune, my charm and your exquisite beauty. Everything unites in our favour and draws us closer together. Then I'm sure you'll agree that a short delay... My one and only desire is to please you. But I would never venture to ask my uncle to postpone it for a single moment. Then I shall have my father see to it. I doubt he will give his consent. I myself could not, without chagrin, put off the appointed hour of our happiness. But you will doubtless change your mind when you see for yourself the advantages of our union. <laughs> Shall she be shot in peace? 
Time for uh, uh, to uh, to get to know each other, sir. You must believe that my gratitude. No, no speeches. Be my friend and make my daughter happy. That's all I ask. Now go and find your uncle. There'll be time enough for courting after you've been a bed together. Father. Yes, my dear. What is it? If only I dared to tell you something. Oh, dear, speak, child, speak. You know that I would rather hear your voice than the music of the finest pack of dogs in England. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
It, eh? You, you mean you don't love Blifil? That you don't want to marry him? Upon my soul, I do not. Oh, I am very annoyed, madam. Very annoyed indeed. But your news comes too late. You should have told me before. What impertinence. Tis for your advantage that I have concluded this match. And I am determined upon it. Bliffil is young, he's rich, he's Allworthy's nephew. He loves you, he suits you. And you damned well shall marry him. I would rather die than give my consent. Then die and be damned. For have him you shall, though thou dost hang thyself the next morning. I'm your father. And yet you dare to disobey me. And yet you dare to disobey me. Both you, Sophia, and my sister deceive me. Deceive me. No, no. No, I swear you will obey me. No, 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 I swear you will obey me. You shall marry him today. You shall marry him today. Oh, father. I'm your father. And yet you dare to disobey me. And yet you dare to disobey me. Both you, Sophia, and my sister deceive me. Deceive me. Fear I might lose my temper. Tom, make her do as I wish, for it is the finest match. You refused him? They said that you were in love with him. I never want to hear his name again. If I could only describe to you the indignation that he rouses within me, and must I be a witness of his good fortune while I am consumed in silence by the most violent passions? Tom. Enough! Do you think I don't know your feelings myself? You must forget me forever. Oh, no. 
cursed in with these drunken Scots roaring away, I cannot sleep a wink. I say, though, upon my word, friends, considering what hour of night it is, I think you might at least... You see, courtesy is quite lost on them. My dear, my dear, wench, wench, come quickly. I'm coming, I'm coming. What, sir? Nothing to drink? All I desire is sleep. My dear, can you have nothing done about this din? Tell them to stop making such a noise. Or to make it somewhere else. At this hour, we should all be asleep. Come on, you rowdy lot. You're keeping everyone awake with your singing. Working as hard as makes all of us bright. And the technology was and the marvelous. That's a way out when no one out of spell. They go to Robert and Brundamine. Take it off your glass, we be thought of our for life. Glass, 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 What a commotion! I might as well sleep in the street. Tom! Tom Jones! Mr. Dowling, my one remaining friend. <laughs> What brings you to Upton? I'm bound for London on Mr. Allworthy's affairs. And you? What are you doing here? I am in despair. Weston is set to destroy me, and Allworthy has expelled me from his house. Expelled you? But what could have brought adversity to such excess against you, my dear friend? My love for Miss Sophia has ruined me in their esteem. I see. Was Blithel a witness of your room? Blithel? Why, yes, indeed, sir. He seemed to delight in it. But for you, my friend, the whole world reviles and spurns me. My only friend, I love you. Observe the harshness of my lot. If you could only feel my despair within your heart, I stand upon my own. But there was my usual folly. I knew no love be so great. From home, my all would be rejected. My protector, my guardian, and my friend. Gone is she, I cherish and treasure. Gone, the last is all life's pleasure. Gone, a honor, peace, and hope. My only friend, I am. Observe the harshness of my heart. If you could only feel my despair within your heart, I stand upon my own. But there was my I deserve such misfortune, such a cruel fate. I have made up my mind. I shall not go on to London. Allworthy shall see and hear me at once. 
You must go to your room and enjoy what rest you can. The key to your fate is safe in my hands. I give you my word upon it. If I could only believe you, you must do so, for I have your interests at heart. Unfortunate young man, were I to hold my tongue a whole moment longer, I should become an accomplice in the conspiracy against him. to reason. Oh, if only I could be certain of that. But there can be no turning back. Go, quickly, order the horses for dawn.
Madam, he has already arrived with Bliffle, Allworthy, and your aunt. Oh, mercy. I've seen you again, Sophia, but for the last time. Trust me, both of you, I have a plan. Mrs. Honor, conduct your mistress to her room. Jones, you go up to yours. I shall await them here. Be brave, my love. Come quickly, madam, I can hear them. Now, ah, Bliffle, your villainy will be confounded. Now, wench, I know my daughter's here somewhere. Damn me if I would unkennel her this instant. I would never have suspected Jones of such audacity. Good gracious, Dowling. Already? Where's Blissle? He's gone on to find a justice of the peace. Against my advice, I have to say. Listen to me, both of you. We can settle matters without him. Squire Weston. Your daughter is here, but is unable and unwilling to escape. Damn me, sir, she'll do as I say. Where are you going, sir? I warn you, you will only dishonor both yourself and your daughter by a useless outburst. The darling is right as ever. Here more than anywhere, we have need of prudence. A pox on your prudence, I want my daughter. Oh, very well, I shall take you to her. Hmm. But you must promise to treat her as a father should. Oh, Squire right. Allworthy, I shall join you presently. Follow me, Squire Weston. Follow? With a pox. Tom Jones, ungrateful young rascal. I loved him, and now he brings dishonor on my house. Oh, I've sheltered a viper in my bosom. The justice of the peace is on his way. The villain will at last be apprehended, and justice will be done. I would rather have avoided such measures. I'm loath to inflict such disgrace on one who was so dear to me. Let me assure you, Uncle, that I share your sorrow. When I think of the pleasure I had in his company in my youth, how rash and extravagant my affection for him was, yet who but a villain would have betrayed the love I bore him by attempting to thwart my happiness with Miss Sophia? Granting success to my design, she has put set her adoration no higher than on him to whom Mars and Venus, strength and beauty, wealth and honor, grace will be. Application gives her beauty for my delectation. Time alone will restore my prize. Oh, to the heart, my right to fair so truth and justice reward my patience, granting success to certainly be punished. Perhaps he might be of some little service if he were dispatched forthwith to the colonies. To the colonies? Oh, 
Jones, your brother. His brother? What's that? Downing? Yes, indeed, his brother. Come along, you hussy. From now on, I shall keep watch over you. Listen. Be silent for once. Darling, what do you mean by all this? All worthy. See the measure of your injustice. Tom Jones, who continues to love and esteem you despite your persecution of him, this virtuous man is your nephew and Bliffle's elder brother. <laughs> Jones is your nephew? <laughs> How can this be? You remember the man Summers? Yeah, an honest fellow. Indeed. I... For two years, Allworthy, he lived in your house. And he married your sister in secret. Five months later, he died. Jones is the child of this marriage, which was concealed from you, lest it should prove an obstacle to the second marriage you wished to arrange to Bliffle's father. <laughs> My darling, what proof do you have of all this? Bliffle, will you now produce the papers which I entrusted to your care? Papers? <laughs> what, what papers? What's he talking about? He's been drinking! <laughs> you impertinent young pup! Your mother's last letter, of which I have a copy. Read it yourself, Allworthy. It's your sister's handwriting. Good heavens! You villain! Ah, uh, my, my dear uncle, if by a sincere confession of my slight error I might hope for pardon... Pardon?! Get out of my sight! Damn me, you scoundrel old Suki! If I were your uncle, I'd have you all... A monstrous deceit has been practised upon me, but by my oaths... Oh, no oaths, sir. Only mend your conduct towards your nephew. Bring me Jones, immediately. I shall, sir, with pleasure. I can scarcely credit it. What a discovery! That is an ugly tale, and quite unheard of in the kennels. <laughs> God bless my friend Jones. <laughs> what times we'll have after all, hunting together. And uh, nothing has really upset our plan since uh, he is your nephew and sole heir. Ah, come along, Tom, come along. Sir, Mr. Dowling has told me the incredible tale. Yes, Tom, you are my nephew, and you must believe in my deep affection and heartfelt regret for what has passed. And now... You shall have my Sophie by this hand. Miss Sophia, will you accept your humble servant? Since my father at last commands it. Oh, really, gentlemen, you do surprise me. From Glasgow, you were saying. That things are not looking up after all. Oh, brother. Well, what's all this? Food is. We are new, such as all your fine politics could not have provided for. <laughs> you may embrace Jones for a start. Embrace Jones? Yes, 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 yes. yes. He's my friend. Yes. He's to be my son-in-law. He's to have my daughter. It was uh, Summers, you see. His sister, his father, his nephew, his mother. <sighs> it's him, and I'm delighted. There we are. Go on, Tom. Embrace her. Jones! Welcome to the family. <laughs> Let us waste no more time. We shall return to the estate and have our children united this very day. Well said indeed. Let's start off at once. It's a fine scenting day. My, uh, my horses are fresh. By Jupiter, we'll all have time for a spot of hunting before breakfast. <laughs>